Head Crack After Hours is a dude who's been getting to the bag for quite some time, man. And he's back in effect with a new cassette. You know, yeah, the, for uh, sure. the reference EPMD. Uh, one time <laughs> right. for the Sorry the Kid. What's going on? What's going on? Word up, man. It's Good, been man. a minute. Yeah, it's been, been, been a minute. Been but a little while. Why I know when it's quiet on Sayari's side, that means Sayari working. Yeah, always working. It ain't never like, I ain't never chilling. Got you. Now, for people who have been following your fandom for a minute, yeah. Um, you know, a big bump happened a couple years ago where it's like, okay, cool, this dude's signing the cash money. And yeah. there was a lot of people who was like, yo, that's a bad move. Like, yeah. you know, Sayari got this independent spirit. I don't for know sure. if he belongs over there. Sure. You even did a record in a video that said, yeah, yeah. yo, everything about the BI, like, yeah, I got it under control. Right, for sure. And now you're not on cash money. Yeah. What happened? Um, it's a lot of stuff happening. Um, I mean, to conclude it, it's all good right now. Like, I just talked to Bird the other day. Good. You know what I'm saying? On IG, we chopped it up. And, um, we just, you know, we still understanding about how, you know, certain things just didn't work out the time and, um, a lot of other things I was involved with the situation. But, um, the, the, the way the business was going, um, I felt like after I got off the, the free black tour with, um, Black and Sabrina Claudio, I just felt like I needed to go, you know, my separate ways with the way my career was going with, how much work I felt like I put in and, um, you know, with my team and stuff like that. So I wanted to make so many adjustments from there. So, you know, we just respectfully figured it out. It took a couple of months, like it took a while, almost a year for the lawyers to kind of figure out how I could work out for me to separate myself. Gotcha. And, you know, by the graces of God, like Bird did pick up his phone and say, you know, if he can do this, you know, let him figure it out and then he can walk. So you didn't have to buy yourself out, you know, like I definitely people. did. Really? Yeah. But not through court. I ain't had to be going public like I'm about to sue him. It was right. all peace, bro. It wasn't like, ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Because cause it ain't like what everybody was try, would charge the bash, cash money and bird, which ain't really my business. But with people saying that, they owe the artist money. But I owe them money. So that's, yeah, that's yeah, different. It wasn't like I had to buy myself out and they owe me money. Is I I was basically just returning something that I was given pretty much. Like, Pushing you know a dope space. Yeah, which is respect because he ain't had to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's small money to them, bro. So it's like big money to somebody else probably, but, you know. Now, last time we talked, you was getting ready for a battle. You know, for people that don't know. That's how long ago that was? It, it was that long. Damn. Like, I mean, you've been touring, you've been doing a lot of things. And yeah. even when I was looking at the records you had around that time, because <laughs> yeah. this is even before the heartbreak. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. had to be at least as strong for maybe five years ago. Before the heartbreak was what, 2016? Yes, yeah, so I, I think it was right before that, yeah. Yeah, so you were yeah. getting ready for a battle with E Ness, which, <laughs> you know, funny. shout out to E Ness. I mean, yeah. he hung in there. Yeah, I still God. rock with E Ness. Damn. Yeah, I still rock, <laughs> I still rock with E Ness. But, yo, like, you know, you showed up that night. For, for real. Sure, for sure, for sure. I ain't going to lose. And. To, to add that to, you yeah. also break the stigma that, like, battle rap dudes don't know how to make records. Yeah. Because you got a lot of dope records under your belt. Yeah, I mean, you got a few people that battled back in the day that had a few records, but my separation was, like, from going from battling to, like, being able to be on, like, an R&B tour. Now, that hasn't been done. Right. You, know, you got a few people. Of course, you hear, like, overall, majority battle rappers cannot make good songs. You know what I'm saying? But um, that was that's why I wanted to curve it. I want to say, nah, like, there ain't one battle rapper that's, like, done it like that. You know what I'm saying? And then, once again, I never consider myself a battle rapper at all. I just compete. It's just like, if you rap, if he got a verse and I got a verse, I know my verse is better than his, and I'm willing to show you that right now. So it's more like competition. And I ain't never been... I'm not about to be, you know, trying to get on every Smack URL event every day. Like, that ain't me. Like, and I watch it every day. I watch all of them. Much respect. A lot of them is my homies from Austin, New John, John, Hollow to Don, Cortez, Twerk. Like, these are all my peoples. You know what I'm saying? But that's never been my thing is that to be categorized that. You feel me? Yeah. Now, when you look at, like, even just that whole culture, you know, you'd imagine, yeah. like, battle rap is, like, the boxing <laughs> yeah, of yeah, yeah. words. Yeah. Now, when you're preparing for a battle, you know, when you wake up that morning, do you, like, get any level of butterfly in your stomach. Cause like, it's not even a matter of being scared, but just yeah. a certain level of fear that you know you're still alive and that you do have to take certain things seriously. Like yeah. what goes to your mind the day of an, a competition? I mean, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I never, like you see how they do it now. Like I never, I, and this is just being honest. I never actually took a bunch of time uh, researching and like preparing for a battle. Like 99% of my battles was dead on the spot. Like most of them, you know what I'm saying? Like Eden S was a little bit, I had a few lines in my head that I just threw in my head before I did it and kind of prepared a little bit, but I never did it the way that they do it. Now they get like a month and or some, some and some change, you know, kind of, and that's dope how, how it's adjusted like that, but that ain't how I started. I was rapping like, oh, you know how I used to go. Like, yeah, on, like, like my first battle was in high school, you know what I'm saying? By the school buses, my, my bro June, 
it was some dude that was like allegedly like beating everybody at school and June heard it in, my bro June heard it in class and right before we got on the bus he was like yo just show everybody and that was my first battle I just it's so weird to see it go from being that to yeah. like you know where you have like 90 days to where you can pull like ancestry.com on a nigga and like, it's dope know? though I mean it, it's dope but I, like I, it. I miss the spontaneity of like yeah. this is happening right now it's yeah. on the spot cause yeah. I would imagine even now like high school battles cats like oh, I'll battle you in two weeks <laughs> yeah, know, well, I mean like, hip hop wasn't as funded as it was now mm-hmm. so so even the battle rappers are looking at it like like if, if I catch a, a twerk or Tay Rock or or any of them, yo, I see you right now, and I give him my best 16. I would not be surprised if he sit there and say, I ain't rapping right now because I'm trying to get this bread. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like back in the days, like, oh, I, we could do it right now. Who cares? Like 12 people in the lobby, only they could only they could live to tell the story, and you go off that, right? Yeah. But that's dead. It's like now it's like. You got to monetize right, everything. Should, should I give it? Yeah, should I give it to him? It ain't no camera out. It's, it's only a phone camera out, it ain't an official camera out. Like, should I really do this right now? But it seems like so, that version lives forever. Because you hear those stories of, yo, one time Kane ran up on Rod, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It was epic. Yeah, you know, like sometimes, yeah. like, you know, the imagination of it all yeah. is stronger than, like, actually seeing it ever could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the culture of it would never leave my soul for me. But then again, I don't think I would do it for free. I, I damn near wouldn't do it for bread. I done got a couple offers after the Eden S one. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, nah. It wasn't enough money and didn't make sense for what I was trying to do at the time. I was trying to adjust at the time. So I ain't even want to do that one. But I had so much respect for Enes and just him being a legend, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I just wanted to do it and wrap yeah. it up for after that. That was a fun night, man. It was actually yeah, was the highlight fun. of the night yeah, being fun. at the main fun. event then pop yeah, off that fun. night. Yeah, it was fun. It was so fun. like let's just say if they like made this, you know, cause you got the guys who that like that's all they do. Like, you yeah. know, they're not really here to make records, that's all they do. But let's just right. say if you took like the guys who were in the game for mm-hmm. real, like, you know, guys like yourself, guys like Drake, guys like uh, you mm-hmm. know, Lupe Fiasco, yeah. Royce the Five Nine, if there was a league <laughs> right. like with the guys who are out, yeah, who would you want to see? What battle was? Yeah, I mean everybody. What the, I mean, are, we, are we choosing people? Am, am I? Do I got my eye on the man? Like nah. Well, look, like, look, anybody, bro. Let's just say like somebody who anybody. you think who's mainstream right now. All of them. Who could t- who could really? Take all it of in. them. All of them. Like, I'm just that, that's just how I am, bro. Anybody like it's it's not about like one by one or one no, bro. Anybody that I feel like I can compete with anybody, and I mean that. I know everybody's like, are you supposed to say you the best? And I really believe I can do that. And a lot of people know what time it is with me, especially. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, people know what time it is with me. Now, there's a lot of times when people say that, and, like, the inner monologue in my head says, you ain't right, nigga. But, no, I've seen your work. <laughs> Damn, the lyricists in, the, in, Atlanta, so, in Atlanta right now that don't know my name and don't respect me, from, you know, from Sahas to, the, you know, Jid or Trans Lee and all of Like, everybody, Quentin Miller, everybody know what it is, bro. Mm. Like, and those are all my dogs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, everybody know. So, but we're still at a point in your career where, like, you know, we're still campaigning for new ears, finding yeah. new people. So always. Battling always. that duality of people wanting, who, like, know you from, like, some of, like, the harder edge stuff to what you're doing yeah. now, which is, like, a little bit more melodic. Yeah. Peas into the female ear. Yeah. You got a lot of female fans. Yeah. Yeah. A hell load of them. Yeah. I mean, but I've been around girls since third grade, bro, so I just kind of smartened up, like, you know, trying to figure out, you know, once I figured out what was making money and what wasn't. But the thing is, like, a lot of people were here, like... I did an interview the other week, and, there was, uh, and my man was like, yo, you know, why'd you switch it up, man? I missed this. But I'm like, bro, if you, if you really, if you get so overclouded because that's what's popular from me. You see me on that tour, and you see the numbers on the SoundCloud, on my streaming on my streaming sites, like my top five songs is all R&B stuff. Mm-hmm. Except for the one song I got now, New Michael Mex with uh, Jen and Earth Gang. For some reason, that picked up numbers. But um, what they don't realize is every t- right before I drop um, a Heartbreak Project, which I do pretty much every time around Valentine's, Valentine's Day, I either do a swing them on a freestyle or I drop an all hip hop project. It's just that it don't get the exposure that the, the R&B tape get. It's weird how that works, though. Oh, I'm like, bro, if you, if you pay attention, I still give you one a year. I give you one a year with just rapping. Yeah. I put it out as an EP. I don't over-promote it. I don't get merch for it. I put it out there so that they can shut up, you know what I'm saying? And then I go do, you know, my stuff so I can feed my family. You Which one is your, your heart more personally in between the two? I mean, honestly, m- music is music. To me, like, if you listen... The reason why I feel like I'm separated is when they try to consider me like, a whatever R&B artist or whatever. I feel like if you're really listening, I'm still using like a lot of skill syllable word patterns. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm still using a lot of lyrics. I throw punchlines in there here and there when I can when it's not reaching. Like if you're really listening, you're not just thinking about the overall of what you hear. You'll realize that I'm still using my skill in that. So, um, nah, I mean, for me, I ain't going to lie. I love when I rap. You know what I'm saying? I, I love how we, because there's less rules. 
um in hip hop than it is in R and B. Yeah. You know, I mean, and you know, it, it it been like that. You know what I'm saying? Just that now, you know, people try to act like, you know, the it, it turned into pop culture, like, oh, it's bigger than pop and rock, but you we all know hip hop big been bigger than pop and oh, rock. Yeah. It's just that we was getting bootlegged and the numbers didn't show on the streaming sites and now we done trick kids and black people into thinking that you're playing the song for free today when really we finally can get paid from it. So the numbers are sh showing. Pop and rock been fooling us for, for the longest, but we know how influential we've been. I done been in from China to London, and everybody tries to act like they're from Atlanta and New York right now. I done seen it. It's crazy. So like, yeah. what, what, what country you went to where it kind of blew your mind the hardest? China. Really? Yeah, my translator, Mustafa. Yeah. Is he here? Nah, he's, he's never been here. Okay. But I thought he was American. Okay. Yeah, it, it scared me because... When I met him, I'm you know I'm expecting to see you know Bruce Lee, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> now he looked like him, but he sounded like us. And I'm just asking him like, how'd you learn English? He said hip hop. He told me he learned English through hip hop. He was struggling with some words. Like yeah. he would do this. My man um, Don Tell Antonio, one of my directors, he came out there with me, and he wasn't understanding it. But every time me and Don Tell were like being like a close exchange or like some funny reminiscent stuff, like a lot of hip like lingo with black folks, he would get closer and closer. Like he would just stand right here. Kind of try to absorb yeah, it. And one time Dante was like, bro, you're like, you kinda close. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I was telling Dante, like, he's trying to, he's trying to under he kept misusing how to say turn up too. How was he saying it? He was doing it wrong every time. He would just say it at the wrong time of the sentence. And I was I kept correcting him and I was just like, but it was just dope to me to see. But when he spoke English, it sounded American. But when he wanted to go Chinese, it would go right back. So it was kind of like just to see that they were doing in London. Like when I went to London, man, all the artists are using our flows. Like yeah. They still they can't let the accent go, but all the artists are using our flows. Like that's all that they listen to. That's all they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Even in, I did some songs with some people in South Africa too, from uh, Cape Town and Johannesburg. Like DJ Slick out there, AKA they're like huge out there. I did songs with them, and they they got the sound as well. You know when they're not doing the Afrobeat stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy out there. Bro. It's amazing how like our influence touches the world in such a way, yeah, for way. better or for worse. Because like you know, kind of like you know, I, I told people all the time, hip hop is kind of like fine china. Sometimes, mm -hmm, you know, you're mm -hmm. giving out the paper plates for the world to see, mm -hmm. and sometimes you're giving out the porcelain joints that you yeah. pull out on the holidays, yeah. and sometimes people see the paper plates more than the porcelain. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's but right. it's dope that, uh, you know, yeah, that they 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 so receptive to it as yeah. as they are. Yeah. So you've been around the world. Mm -hmm. You, uh, you know, you've, you've had deals that people can only dream of. For sure. You, you're self-contained. You're self Always. What does Sayari the Kid need now in 2019? Oh, uh, I'm I'm doing pretty much. I needed my freedom. Like that was the, that was the first thing. I needed to be able to put my music out at will. Gotcha. I had learned so much before that and during it. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm just smarter and stronger than ever. You know what I'm saying now, mentally and musically. So, um, right now, just my album coming out May 17th after the heartbreak. Um, me and my bro Pacquiao, you know, we doing a joint project called Two Sides of a Story, dropping this summer. That joint. Well, shout crazy. out to Pac. He was heavy on yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Five. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing now. Like right now, I'm just getting the music back out, you know, getting the people back in tune, you know, dropping whenever I want, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, we get back on the road and do different things. You know, so I started my show for a company, you know what I'm saying? I got the Sprinter, people can rent it out and stuff, doing that business. So oh. just doing a bunch of different things like that, bro. So just more into the business side, you feel me? Got you. Now, if people want to know about the show for company and the Sprinter van, like, you know. If I mean, were, you know, you can hear Diane and you can hear Schwein, you know what I'm saying? But it's pretty much got a tricked out Sprinter, got the Wraith lights in it. All tricked out, you know what I'm saying? Like you can rent it days, hours, whatever. If you want to look like a boss, it ain't no party bus. Okay. It's like you were gonna come through looking like the man, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So it's just about you know being on my business. I don't, I really don't. I don't want to say I need anything. It's just we back, we back free, just doing the music that I love to do. Dope. You know I mean? Now, at the end of the day, who does Sorry the Kid do this for? Oh, my family, bro. Like it, this all starts with family, bro. Like this, anybody that really know me, I don't gotta break it down. But anybody that know me know like. The fam is exactly what it is. My parents, you know what I'm saying? Everybody in my family, like, they know what it is. That's what it is. Always been about. It ain't never been about me like that, for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm always going to keep that attitude and that energy. And, of course, like, even for the youth, you know what I'm saying? I love to be in touch with the kids, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm, I'm going to do my second youth. Like, I got to do a youth camp in, um, in Marietta, where I'm from, at McKeechee High School once a year in the summertime. Sorry. So I'm doing that again this summer for kids. A little basketball camp where I bring different athletes and stuff. And I'm going to do that again this summer. You hoop? I used to hoop a little bit. I'm trash now, for real. It's good that you, people admit that, because some people like be like, they still I'm like sweaty, up. good as they are. Yeah, I'm washed up. Like, I'm are you like up. Jordan when he came back? Like, I'm trash, yeah, bro. Really? My back be hurting. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm. I'm so are you bad. even David Buster's good at this point? I'm decent. Yeah, yeah. I, I compete. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I, st- I was the LA Fitness yesterday. I ain't scored much, but, you know, I did what I did. Got you. They, yeah. they call you Pops yet or what? They call me Easy in the gym. I don't, they don't oh, even know. man. They call me Easy. easy. Yeah, they call me I That's used to, the code to take it easy on. Yeah, I used to scream that when I scored when I was a kid. So that never, my basketball oh. name never left. Yeah, they call me Easy at the gym. Word, man. Like, yeah. I, you know, I've been trying to, like, gather, like, <laughs> other, like, guys that were pseudo nice in other games and put yeah. together this intramural league. You know, and do like events for the kids. Like I'm oh, trying to put together real? like a dodgeball tournament. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that's so dope. if you yeah. if you want to get down, like I'm anything putting... for kids, I'm with it, bro. Hit me. Hell yeah, yeah anything man. for kids, yeah. For the youth, them. Yeah. So new project coming youth, in them. May. Yeah. Emancipation Proclamation. It's already out. out all right platforms. Now. Yep. Who is the squad? Who does Sire the kid roll with? Which I mean, I, bro, I always been roll with, with myself. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't under no, I ain't under nobody. Right. I ain't never been under nobody. But for us, like guys that you got under your belt that. You put it on. Like, do you have, you know, like, you're I got usually people, a master and apprentice. I, I don't even like wording that like that. Like, okay. if I work with somebody, it's more like a partnership to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's more like we've been as partners now. It's like I'm, I'm so past, like, categorizing anything like that. I feel like we, because there's so many rules you can break. Like, people knowing, you know, Schreinbeck for being my, my manager. But to me nowadays, like, I look at her more like a business partner. Same, same with Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? Like when we work, I feel like, you know, we do partnerships. We, 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 we do business together and we business partners and we learn the game together and I teach them what I could teach them. You know what I'm saying? So it's more like I move like that. And if I can't be business partners with somebody, I don't even want to work with you. For real. Love it. You know what I'm saying? So ain't nobody under me, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even the producers I work with, like, we, we partners. You know what I'm saying? We, we work like that. Smart play. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of people out there, like, they, they got records. They hot, you know, but, but their SoundCloud numbers are low just because mm-hmm. the awareness ain't there. Yeah. How could you recommend for them to kind of get that spark to kind of put a fire under their back? Like, you know, um, how, how did you build yourself up? Me, personally, I started, I just worked on, first of all, I started with the music. I worked on my craft first. You know what I'm saying? Other people, some people don't got to do that. And I, I done been around artists that I've been cool with that didn't have to go that route. But, um... Me, I started with the music. Then I started person by person. Everything I did, I, rev- I revolved around my music and put, giving it to somebody. Even from day one when I started with CDs in my hand, which I don't do anymore, or going to the gas station, wrapping my vehicle, like the um, constant marketing. You know, if you got to wear your shirt every day, any any, any name brand stuff, um, when you're on a come up at least, because there comes a time where you got to be an artist and look like a star and you shouldn't be wearing your own merch every yeah. day. But, um, bro, let people know every day, like, Put that shirt on. Tell your homies put that shirt on. Keep the CDs in your hand. You know, anybody that know my story, bro, they know. Like, I barely could give somebody that because I had CDs in my hand. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like just marketing. Like, you know, now with the internet, you know, come up with a full marketing plan, bro. Like, even if it ain't fully big budgeted, as long as it's somewhere where you can get everything that you're doing to every... Start with the people you know first. Start with your family. If you got 100 people that's that you cool with, start with them and build it up. People get so discouraged because they're on the internet and they just scrolling and they see all of the success and the big numbers and it's hard to compete with that. But I think people just got to start day by day. Gotcha. You know, market as you can, brand brand yourself as you can. And the game is a little bit easier now because you can kind of do whatever re- whatever represents you. You know what I'm saying? If you a flossy, you know, fake it till you make it, do it and do that. You know what I'm saying? If you are humble and conscious, then do that and just be consistent with that grind. You know what I'm saying? And you won't lose that way, I believe. Makes a lot of sense. Well... Wow.